Three, two, one. Hey, internet friends. This is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe, the Synergy Collaborative, and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got somebody on from the west side of town. His name is Bob Doyle. Bob, you there? I, well, I'm somewhere. I'm going to say I'm here, sure. I think you're in Arizona. No, Nevada. That it's Well, I learned when I moved here that it's Nevada. And if you say Nevada, they know you're an outsider. Well, I am an outsider. I'm from Minnesota, for Christ's sakes. Well, I was an outsider till I moved here. So I'm just trying to play along, Brad. <laughs> we can have some fun. What do you got behind you? It looks like a robot or something. That's the uh, logo for the How Thoughts Become Things movie on the big screen here. The tree. Oh, wow. From here. And then, of looks... course, you know, we, the, the palm tree and the ocean and, you know, gotta just have that. right. Got to have that. So how long you been out in uh, Nevada? Las Vegas? Yeah. I moved out here. I moved out here about two years ago. It was the last place on my list that I ever would have thought I'd move because I used to come here you know to visit to do events or whatever and I'm like no it's too freaking hot here it was like 115 when I was driving through here I'm like nah, never but then when the time came time for a move and I was considering where do I want to go and I had been in California I was like look I just wasn't finding anything somebody brought up Vegas I said no and then I looked into it and I was like oh and I've been here two years and I freaking love it I mean the summers it's starting to get brutal right now but it's, I love it here. And other than the heat, when it's not hot, it's beautiful. So what, what is it that drew you there? Just a place to be? Well, because, you know, it's like when I'm thinking about where I'm going to go next, I was thinking, but there's so many things that I'm up to, you know, certainly my work in personal development and law of attraction, that kind of thing. And there's a lot of events and things that come through here when there's not a quarantine. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, so it's a pretty active place for me to do my thing if I want to, but there's so much other things that I'm up to too, more in the entertainment space with the Bob Doyle show and other things that I like to do. It's also a great place, you know, to, to just play in, in that area. So, you know, there's just a lot about it that, that made me think, well, I mean, it's not a forever home. I don't see myself living here forever, but it's, you know, it's beautiful. There's mountains and, and it's just, you know, it's a, it's a great holding place to go, okay, well, what do I really want to do next and shape? you know, whatever the next chapter is. So that's kind of what I'm doing. And it's fairly affordable out there. And it's a well known place. If you need to tell anybody from Dubai, where do you live? You say Las Vegas, they know what you're talking about. Right? Everybody knows. <laughs> that's right. It's like a staple. So we know you from the secret. Shh. And now, Brad, if you keep saying it, <laughs> everyone's gonna know. <laughs> well, I've been I've been let, I let out the secret. <laughs> All right. Well, no, get right we to may the as contra well talk about it. I want to get to right to the controversial part of it because it kind of bothered me because I've been a law of attraction and mindset kind of person for a long time. And it's kind of like, you know, what's in your vortex, the Abraham Hicks stuff and all that kind of stuff. And people go, that secret stuff is a bunch of BS. It's like you snap your fingers and you got a Lamborghini in your front yard. Right. Of course, we never said that, but you know. No, but that's what people interpreted it as, which yeah. is bizarre. Yeah. Well, I've, I've heard so many different interpretations that you can imagine. When it first came out, it was online only, and it was basically the only people who knew about it were the people who were on the email list of the people who were in it. So it was very well received, right? Obviously. It was when it went out on DVD, and then the rest of the world started looking at it and going through their filters. They'd never heard of this kind of thing before, and they're, they're hearing like attracts like or whatever they, they take from it, and it triggers all of their stuff. And so they see what they want. There's some people who swear there's, it's only about money. That's they, they swear that's all the movie is about. And yet there's health and there's, you know, uh, relationships and there's world peace and there's the whole thing. And we talk about action and yet people think it's the movies about closing your eyes. So it's just, that's just humanity. That's just how it's going to happen. And it's also, I think a lot about it is patience. I have a challenge with that. I know, cause I like direct response kind of stuff, but it's like mm -hmm. a farmer, you plant the seed and you got to wait a while before you get corn. Everything in life is like that. It took a while to learn to walk. It took a long, but, we, but when it comes to our personal development type of stuff, we want it instantly because we've been wired to think that it works that way or it can work that way. If you just buy this course or this two, three steps, da, 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 then it can happen quick. Well, change is going to happen when your brain changes along with a vision. That, that's it. So it all comes down to what is going on up here eventually. All the energy and the vibration stuff, I love it. It is, but still your interpretation of all of it is going through your brain. So that's where the focus of the work needs to be. And to change your brain significantly is going to take time, just like it took years to get it where it was when you're running on autopilot. To be intentional about it and create new, new, new neuropathways, it, 
you have to be patient and you have to let go of it, uh, it needing to be at a certain, cause you weren't like that with the rest of your life. And yet somehow you expect, you know, this is going to be different. And so people's expectations were not met. Sure. Sure. Yeah. Cause uh, it made sense if they're all in that, that realm and they kind of understand how this works, how they would yeah. go along with it. And then newcomers come in and go, they kind of right. doubt it. Cause I know I get into that, you know, early on doing affirmations and I'm going, I am healthy. I am a millionaire. And my mind's mm -hmm. going, no, you're not. I am too right. a millionaire. And the affirmations yeah. just kind of, you don't believe them, you know, the, the, the mind is right. A, and that's, and that's, Yes. Well, again, it's the wiring. And so the, the concept between uh, uh, around affirmations, obviously, is repetition, 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 so that you slowly but surely begin to create new neural pathways. Uh, if you allow yourself to get into the feeling of what it is that you're saying, of course, your brain is going to say no. Of course, it's going to scream at you. Of course, of course, of course, because it's been wired a different way. So now you're telling it something else. So it's going to say, well, that's not what that's not what's real. So but as that changes over time, then it will become easier and easier for your brain to believe this, that and the other thing. But and there's shortcuts, you know, I mean, there are shortcuts to to getting that wiring going and dealing with all the negative feelings that come up as you start to tell yourself something that your mirror is telling you the opposite of. But all in all, techniques or shortcuts aside, it's still going to be about your brain needs to get rewired. Yeah, I use the analogy like if you are trying to learn Japanese, you get plopped into Japan, you're going to learn Japanese. It's just going to take some time. <laughs> and you're surrounded with it and you have yeah. no choice, right? Exactly. You have no choice. And, and we here, we have choices. So we take on, we're going to improve our lives. I'm going to buy this personal development program, whatever it is. But you spend 45 minutes a day on it and you think that's going to, and then the, the other 23 and hours and 15 minutes, you're back with your old, what? so you're immersed mostly in your crap, right? 45 right. minutes a day, it's a beginning. And if you, over time, obviously, but you're, the, the idea is to shift the entire way of being, not just this certain segmented way and a cert, for a certain amount of time. But again, that's kind of what the personal development industry has done do you, to us. Do you know the name Arne Ranson? He created I don't a thing know called that. question cards. No, I haven't um, heard that. What's interesting about these question cards is they're kind of affirmations, but they're done in the form of questions. Like mm. instead of saying, I am wealthy, it says, why am I wealthy? Why, yes. Brad, I'm glad you brought that up. Because it's this whole thing about questions, asking questions, because we, we will get answers to our questions. We will get them if we can continually ask them. But people are asking the wrong questions. Why can't I succeed? Why don't I have any money? Why does this always happen to me? Boom, boom. And they just keep getting the answers, get the to, answers that question. to what they don't want. Yes. And so why is it that everything I touch turns, turns to gold? Why is it that people just love to be around me? Why am I constantly meeting the right people? Those are the questions that you ask yourself so that the universe, if you will, yeah. will give you the answer. Now, there's that aspect. There's the universe will provide it. But, but if you ask yourself those questions, you will become a different person. You will occur differently. In the, it doesn't have to be woo-woo or invisible. You will actually just change how you're being. There'll be exactly. a certain amount of confidence. And so it's real practical stuff, too. Yeah, there's this energy stuff going on. But, but, but anybody can understand this. If you are telling yourself more confident things and you're saying it over and over and you begin to believe it and you act that way, then the world will respond differently to you. Different opportunities will present themselves. Your reality, what's possible for you will change. Yeah. You, if it's, an, it's an immersion kind of thing. Like you said, if you do affirmation for 45 minutes a day and you spend the rest of your day whining and complaining and being a skeptic. <laughs> and wondering why it's not working. Oh, this law of attraction yeah. stuff doesn't work. Man, it's working right now. What, what got you into it? I was... I found it in a quest for a career that I liked. I had always gone for, I always knew I wanted to be a broadcaster and I studied that and I trained myself and got into radio to, so that I could be creative and silly and fun and, you know, entertaining. That's what I always, that's at the core, that's who I am, right? I want to express myself creatively. And so I got into radio, but it wasn't the dream job I thought because it was a much bigger company and I was a little fish and I really couldn't do what I wanted. And I was 20 something and I'm like, oh, I'm going to do what I want. So I left that and jumped around from career to career and tried to start my own businesses with, with, with things, you know, like I'm not, a, I'm not an unintelligent person, but things just weren't working, you know? And so that's when I started looking at, well, why aren't these things that should be working? Why aren't they working? So that's when I started looking down the more metaphysical paths and, 
And eventually it all led to this whole idea. The, the, my big aha moment in the whole law of attraction pointed to what my predominant beliefs were about money and success. It was one thing to say I wanted to build this and I'm going to have this. And, but my beliefs were very much that you would always be in debt. Money's hard to come by. Because that's what I learned. That was my wiring. And I couldn't talk louder than my wiring, right? right. So, so it was through that journey sort of I got to see like, that's where the quantum physics piece comes in a little bit, like the, the energy behind our belief systems and that that has a real impact. That really triggered me and, and made me go, ooh, I like that. And it, and it connected a lot of dots. So I was able to kind of go after the right thing and start to change my predominant thoughts, which is, you know, what the whole it, thing's about. Is it almost like, because I feel sometimes, I'm, I'm 60, about to be 63, June 19th. You can send me a birthday present. Just okay. <laughs> but Consider it done. I've been doing this for a long time, this life thing, and sometimes things just aren't working. To me, this analogy in my head is like a big automatic transmission, and there's one or two gears that are stripped. And if those gears are stripped, the rear tires aren't going to turn. <laughs> so there must be something that's missing in this transmission in my head, and uh, that's what I need to do those affirmations for and ask those right questions. Because if I, if I ask questions like, why are you wealthy? I start answering like, I am wealthy. I got a full refrigerator. I got uh, plenty of money in the bank account and I've got mm -hmm. friends, so I'm wealthy, but there must be something else that's missing. Well, that's up to you to decide. I mean, the whole missing thing or doing something wrong, that's all our interpretation. You know, it's like, so if, if where is the whole, if I was coaching you, I'd say, well, what, where, what does that missing feel like? What does that whole feel like? Is it not enough money? Is it not enough success? Is there something more? Is there, you know, like searching for here, here's the thing. When, when my message, when I'm coaching people any on any of this stuff, it is not about getting them clear on what their vision is or who they or what they want. It's who they want to be because when they're, when they're trying to create a vision or whatever from, from, whatever problematic position they've gotten themselves in, where they're feeling desperate, no, I'm going to use this law of attraction stuff to solve my problems. That energy creates, they're creating visions out of lack, basically, right? They're not creating it from an empowered person point of view. And that's how, you know, you hear about the people winning the money and, and then they lose it or whatever, because they, they have not moved into alignment with being a person that can handle that. You know, their, right. their, their container, if you will, isn't, isn't that so you have to become who you, you know you have to know who you want to be first and then start to build a vision around that yeah I because the, if I was to tell a brand new person okay tell me what you want they're gonna tell me the money and the cars and the whatever and or, or some really cliche stuff probably you know but I will hear most of the time that that's coming from some pain or you know struggle or anxiety or worry it's really they've got to decide who they want to be and how that's different from who they are now until you do that, it's going to be hit and miss and your results will always be chaotic. And that's, that's the majority of people. They try the law of attraction and they almost get it or they get it and they lose it or it doesn't work or they get the opposite. It's all, because, it's all lack of clarity. It's all lack of in, incongruity between who they're being and what they say they want. But they're blaming the process. They're blaming, all, oh, it's, it, this doesn't work. And it's just, we just need to. It's almost like instead of saying like, who am I? What difference does that make? Because you already are. Well, who do you want to be? You get to yeah. choose. You yeah. get to choose. That's the people spend years trying to find themselves and determine who am I supposed to be? Whoever you freaking want to be. That's the beauty of how we're built. We get to create that. We get to decide I'm going to be this, that, and the other thing. And then you just go and be it. You get to have the experience of life you want to have, you know, but, but you have to make the decision and you got to be committed and all those other things. But there's no one thing you're supposed to be. I know I've changed my being many times over the course of my life as we grow as we mature as we get new interests and 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 you know learn our hard lessons we we change who we be and who we want to be all the time and that's the way of things so you've got your like you said you like the entertainment thing the radio thing you got your own radio show now is that something that sort of parlays and inter interacts with this law of attraction stuff or yeah is it something, something I, well different? There, well, I, I, I started the Bob Doyle show, which is actually visual. It's like, you know, it's a video show to, to kind of try. This was my attempt several years ago of like breaking out, right? I'm going to do this totally different thing and there won't be crossover. Well, that lasted zero minutes because <laughs> the message that I have is in me, whether or not I'm, 
you know, doing it like I'm on a stage or whatever, or even have an intention. It's every now and then it's going to crop up. And the whole theme of everything I do is about creative self-expression and being bold and being able to put yourself out there, making mistakes and having fun and play, 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 play. So everything I do is about that. And so it can get, you know, pretty silly, but I do absolutely when appropriate and only when because I do not like to use the Bob Doyle show as a platform for, you know, selling any coaching or, you know, any, anything in that business. But there are times when it makes sense. A topic comes up and I have something to say, and it would be really goofy for me not to input it given who I am and that kind of thing. But today we had a musical guest who, you know, he, he plays a guitar, but it's also sort of healing. So there's, there's kind of crossover there, but I still keep it light and funny. And, you know, we, so it's not this real serious thing. But to answer your question, I mean, there, it's not, it is a different thing, and yet I am still in it. Yeah, because I've got a, th this show that I developed, Synergy Cafe, is sort of the show for a website I've got called Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And that's mm -hmm. got five different elements of career, finance, relationships, spirituality, and wellness. And people think, well, you're not focusing. You should just focus on health and wellness. But there's also the health and wellness of your career or your relationship or your spirituality or your bank account. So it, it does cross over. And that's part of, I get frustrated when people try and put me in a little pigeonhole so I can see where you, sometimes you got to do whatever you do. I, this was a huge, this was a real live issue for me when post secret, because I definitely got pigeonholed Bob Doyle from the secret. I mean, there's people who still only call me that. Right. And it's like, I, I felt like I was, I had to be a certain way, like Jack Canfield or like Bob Proctor or like these other guys who have been in the industry forever. And I've been in it for three, barely, barely even in it. I had a program that I was teaching. I did not consider myself part of the industry. It was the secret that pulled me into that pool, right? But I'm not like those guys. I don't teach like those guys. I certainly don't behave like those guys in public, you know, on video. And so I like, to, I'm silly. I'm a goofball. And, but, but I, I really pulled that back for a while. And it was just, just got the best of me. It was like, this is no fun. I cannot continue to do this. I, I've got to find a way to be able to be me and give the message that way. So and and I, cast. yeah, well, yeah, absolutely. And it's just no fun. I mean, yeah. so, and the tribe I got is not, wasn't specific enough for me. Do you know? It's like, I was trying to be way too general. So I was getting a whole range of people who maybe I could connect with some, maybe I couldn't. They just saw me as this, Per, you know, guru or whatever. But then when I'm the more authentic I am and the more silly and out there I am, well, now the people who gravitate and come every week, they're my real tribe. Because they like you right. instead of your topic. Yeah, well, or my, or both, you know, but yes, it's me that they are relating to. It's yeah. me that is the connection point and they're either going to get entertainment or they're going to get some law of attraction stuff. I mean, I'll, you know, if I'm going to do something law of attraction, I will say, I'm going to do this event. So don't just surprise them. But, you know, it's, they definitely know my vibe. And they show up on a regular basis and they have a lot of fun. And that's the idea for me. This is mostly about all the broadcast stuff I do is more for fun than propagating information, unless it is clearly specifically for that, like doing a webinar or doing a special presentation or whatever. So what's your uh, next, your upcoming goals, objectives, projects that you're working on that you want to let people know about? So, well, my partner, Tracy Samlow, and I are, have been working on a, a totally different brand, but again, which is sort of a tie-in called Luscious Living Lifestyle. And it's about activating, making your life more sensual, basically, like more yummy or del the words I would have never used before meeting her. But, but it is, it's like, you know, we, we get into a rut with our environment and our environment plays such a huge part of, of our mindset, which then controls our thoughts and our emotions and thus our experience of reality. And there's just such simple things we can do just in our environment, well, simple and really complicated things. Like I'm a big tech geek and I love smart lighting and smart everything, right? So you can spend some money to do the stuff we like to talk about, or you can buy some Palo Santo wood and burn that and change your whole day, right? With a, a colored light or whatever. So everything related to, to luscious, li it's called luscious living lifestyle. So all these things, so there's television programs around it, there's podcasts, there's, you know, all these different things where we showcase this really cool technology and different products to make your life luscious. So it's not a law of attraction project per se, but it does play into getting you into the right mind mindset to be able to create from a really relaxed and, and uh, authentic state. That's like my wife is a shaman and she's gone everything through like uh, 
like uh, affirmations and then feng shui and then she got into mm -hmm. numerology and then she got into essential oils and then she's doing drumming and then she's doing now she's doing dream work it all relevant it's all relevant to the same thing but all these different tools that you discover and it's part of the big picture you know well yeah and and the thing is for her is that it lights her up to do that yep right and that's that's it i mean we're here to be lit up to get lit up you know it, the the science of getting rich the original wallace d waddles book hundred years ago, right, talks about the, the nature of the universe being expand, expansion, expansion. We're, we're meant to grow. And, the, and we are here to give the universe a way to experience itself, right? I mean, we are a, the universe is all energy, but we have senses and emotions and all that. So we're like, we're, we are just like the universe, always expanding, incre life increasing is our, is our way. So we are here to, as I was saying before, expand and do the things we want to do and generate as many awesome feelings as we can because that's what the universe is all about. It's experiencing itself. So we should feel good. We should not feel bad about wanting to feel good, right? And, if, if, and, and exploring topics that light us up, there's reasons for that. It's just, and it doesn't even have to be about helping others. It doesn't have to be that way. Do you enjoy your life? That's the bottom line. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter what other people think you should be thinking about your life. Are you enjoying your moment? Because this is why you're here, to, to have these moment after moment after moment of the human experience until you can't have it anymore. So you may as well enjoy it and make the best of it. And we've got everything we need to do it. Well, that's refreshing with all the craziness that's going on here. Sometimes you kind of like, what's this all about? You know, am I doing anything substantial? You know, with all these riots and stuff going on. I should be oh, doing yeah. something more meaningful, it seems like, but maybe not. Maybe I should just be Well, look, peaceful. here's the thing, Brad, some people are called to do it naturally. Some people are awakened with a calling when they see things like this in the world, like they are called and they move into action without hesitation. And then there's others of us who look at it and go, I, I don't know what I would do to help, you know, and, but, but to feel guilty because you're not doesn't serve anybody. Sure. So either go do something or stop thinking about it. You know, and just focus again on your life. It doesn't, it sounds selfish, but, but a lot, most, the reality is a lot of people are not in a position to do much about all the crazy crap that's going on right now, but they're spending every moment worrying about it. Yeah, they might get But it's doing way. nothing. Yeah, it's, it's doing nothing. And, and, and they're, they're wasting moments that they could be focused on their cat or dog or anything to give them a moment that they enjoy. That's where they're going to be more creative. If they got issues with jobs or whatever, and they need to solve a problem, they need to solve their issues or create visions from a place of peace and being centered and creativity and not fear and panic. So, you know, it, it's, again, it's more important than ever to be mindful of where you're spending your thinking time. Well, this is fun, Bob. I'm going to tune into the Bob Doyle show. Are you on like YouTube and Vimeo yeah. and all that stuff? Is that where you house it? Or I most, I, there, I have a, if you go to BobDoyleShow.com, there's a whole playlist of shows that I've done on YouTube. I have just recently focused mostly on Facebook because it's more, the show is more community and entertainment and people go to YouTube for specific information. It's more of a search engine. So it's kind of hard to get reach for an entertainment based show out there. You know, if you don't already have a huge platform on television or whatever. So mm -hmm. I've, I've refocused over on, on Facebook to do that. So, but I'm super easy to find anywhere, you know, on Facebook, Just Bob Doyle show. Boom. There it is every day, 8 a.m. Pacific time. Oh, well, Monday through Friday. Well, that's it. We'll do then. Awesome. Well, I don't want to do these too long because people do have that commodity of time. There's only 24 that's hours right. a day. So I'm I can only be so engaging for so long. <laughs> I don't know. Before I we can both talk start doing, to you. This that's right. Well, you could start doing magic tricks and stuff. Good. See if you can fool me. Okay, ready? Perception. See those two fingers? That one and that one, that one and that one? They're about yes, the same size, right? From your They're about the same size. Close. From your point mm -hmm. of view. Yes. From my point of view, because it's a different perspective, that one looks longer than that one. Isn't that weird? Yes, it yes. It looks way, way <laughs> <laughs> What hand? Enough yeah, of that craziness. Yeah. Uncle, good old crazy <laughs> Uncle Brad with his magic tricks. <laughs> gig, 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 gig. <laughs> yeah okay well bob i appreciate you taking the time today sorry about the delay but we did it we did so it. we knew we i'm could gonna do beam it, this up it. to the universe i want to thank you for taking the time so peace love and happiness and we will we will reconnect soon i'll get this beamed up and out to your people and we can propagate it out to the universe awesome thank you brad peace